The polls are open and students are already making their voices heard in this year's Student Government Association elections, but there's been some last minute changes to this year's polling schedule. Coming up, find out when you can vote for SGA's executive candidates. Students are checking things off their list as they prepare to leave town during next week's spring break holiday. Find out how one campus department made sure a trip to the mechanic could be taken care of without heading across town. Next. And the Texas Tech men's and women's basketball teams are one game away from the end of the 2019-2020 season. We'll have a look at this past week's games and a preview of the last stop for each team before tournament season begins in sports. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Sarah Carta. And I'm Emily Efren. Voting for the 2020 Student Government Association elections are currently underway, but there has been some news and changes that have mixed things up this year. That's right. Emily, on Monday we brought you a preview of this week's election ballot with a look at each of the executive candidates. But as of Tuesday afternoon, the plan for this year's voting has changed. Right now, Texas Tech students can go online and cast their vote for students running for senator positions in the university's 10 colleges, the grad school, and the law school. Voting for each of these positions opened yesterday morning, and polls will close at 7 p.m. today. But the big change this year involves the election for the executive candidate positions. Voting for student body president, internal vice president, external VP, and graduate VP has been moved to Tuesday, April 7th. The graduate candidate elections were originally scheduled to take place at the same time as the voting for the senator positions. No reason was given for the change, and specific details on this April 7th election will be announced at a later date. This year's executive candidates include Haley Pratt and Hunter Heck in the race for student body president, Ronaldo Bernal and Clay Davis for internal vice president, Candidates Emily Schreiner and Colin McLaren are up for Executive Vice President, and the race for Graduate Vice President includes three candidates, Hayden Gonzalez, Charles Ramey II, and Viet Nguyen. Nguyen is running as an independent candidate, but all of the others are running in two blocks, For the Future and Tech Together. For the Future consists of Pratt, Bernal, Schreiner, and Gonzalez, and Tech Together is made up of Heck, Davis, McLaren, and Ramey. For more information on each of the candidates, just visit ttuhub.net. Throughout the world, fears revolving around the outbreak of the coronavirus have continued to rise, including right here on the Texas Tech campus. As of today, there are no reports of any student, faculty, or staff member who has contracted the disease either here or on any of the university's international locations. Even so, the university is keeping an eye on the situation and creating a plan of action if an out break were to occur on campus. On Monday, President Lawrence Skubanek sent an email to the tech community addressing the measures of the universe addressing the measures the university is taking in response to the threat of the virus. In the email, President Skubanek said, "The health and safety of all students, faculty, and staff at Texas Tech University are our top priority and we are taking a proactive approach to the situation. We will provide updates on spring break and other semester study abroad programs as we receive additional information. The email also included the contact info for the entire tech community to help answer any questions and address concerns regarding the virus. Students are encouraged to contact the Student Health Services by calling 806-743-2848 if they have any questions or concerns. The university is also encouraging any student with flu-like sy symptoms to see a healthcare provider immediately and avoid going to class until they have been diagnosed or treated for their condition. In other news, spring break is just over a week away and most students are starting to get things in order as they prepare to leave campus for the break. With that in mind, one campus group took time out of their regular schedule to make sure student travelers are safe out on the roads. Yesterday, Transportation and Parking Services held the spring edition of the Free Car Clinic in the Commuter West parking lot. During the event, mechanics from Scott's Complete Car Care checked fluids, belts, tires, and other essentials on each vehicle that stopped by. The mechanics also topped off any low fluids and made recommendations to drivers on anything that they might need repaired. TPS also provided free hot dogs, chips, and drinks to attendees, and the South Plains Auto Theft Task Force was on hand to give tips on auto safety and theft prevention. Yesterday's clinic was free for all students. 
The next car clinic will be held in the fall before the Thanksgiving break. Once students finished up at the car clinic, they could head back across campus for a first-time event that featured some resume building opportunities. Starting yesterday at 10 a.m., the Texas Tech Ballroom was home to the first ever Student Government Association Internship Fair. The fair featured representatives from companies, nonprofits, and other groups offering work and learning experiences for students. One group at yesterday's fair was Environmental Recovery, LLC, who owns a property just north of the Lubbock City limits that once served as a recycling facility, but has become an eyesore in recent years. We're working with groups out of tech for some volunteer cleanup, and then with the social media, we want to get the word out there, try to get any kind of funding help because the city took bids on it years back and it was so incredibly high they couldn't get it cleaned up. We're trying to do it, but we need all the help we can get. Environmental Recovery was just one of more than a dozen groups who attended yesterday's fair. The fair was open to students in all majors and classifications. Along with the SGA, the Office of Outreach and Engagement helped organize yesterday's event. There is no word yet on whether another internship fair will be held next year, but you can always find information and internships on opportunities through the Texas Tech Career Center. Just visit careercenter.ttu.edu to make an appointment. Earlier this week, the South Plains saw some much-needed rainfall as a storm front <coughs> moved to the area. That's true, Sarah, but we've already seen some changes as the sun has made a return this morning. So what can we expect to head into the weekend? MCTV's Madison Harton joins us in the studio with a look at the forecast. Madison. Thanks, guys. Well, it is true, Lubbock. We have been seeing a lot more spring-like conditions out here on the South Plains, finally seeing some of that spring weather. And spring weather here on the South Plains means three things. That means an abundance of sunshine, an abundance of rain, and, of course, an abundance of wind out there. And it has been rather gusty outside today. We can see that all the cloud cover that plagued us over the last few days has completely moved out of the area, leaving behind this beautiful blue sky you can see it behind me. And that has really made things warmer for the day. The high temperature for the day climbed up to 65 degrees, sunny and windy conditions, and the wind is coming from the northeast at 20 to 30 miles per hour, but today 40 mile per, it, per hour wind gusts have been possible. So if you're walking to class today, make sure you hang on to your hats. That is going to be dissipating a little bit as we move into the evening, with the wind becoming 10 to 15 miles per hour from the east, a lot more manageable, with a low of 34 for tonight and clear and cold conditions. Now, looking at the South Plains as a whole, we can see that we had a little bit of rain over the last couple of days. The highest rain totals happened out down there to the south of us, which I know anyone who's a farmer out there really appreciates, but sadly, Lubbock metropolitan area only saw about half an inch of rain, and even less as we move up north of us. I don't even think Dimmit had enough to call it a total, which is really sad because I know they really need rain up there. It's very, very dry up there right now. But we should be seeing another chance of rain move in for this week. Now, the cool temperatures for the South Plains area, the coldest temperatures are going to be out at Friona for tomorrow morning, and our warm temperatures are going to be out there off the Cap Rock from us. A lot of you are wondering why we have warmer temperatures off the Cap Rock, and that's just because of their difference from elevation from us. For children, it's going to be 60 64 degrees for tomorrow and Aspermont is going to get up to 62 so very nice out there especially going into this weekend now I know some of you are being bad students and are leaving Texas Tech early to get to your spring break plans a little bit early and that means for some of you that you're going to be driving so I wanted to talk about Texas weather for tomorrow it looks like the warmest temperatures are going to be out there to the coast of us around the Houston area we're sitting at about the upper 60s and the warmest temperatures for Texas are going to be around the border with temperatures climbing up into the 70s pretty standard this time of year for the South Plains and up here in the Panhandle with highs of 59 for Lubbock metropolitan area and it is going to be as always a little bit humid down there in central Texas with a high around 69 degrees for Austin. Now the cool temperatures going into Saturday is where we're going to be seeing a little bit of a mix up and that is actually going to be affecting the weather here in the South Plains even though the coast is really far away we can see that there's warmer temperatures off of it but that southerly wind is going to be bringing temperatures up to us making it a little bit warmer over the next few days. It looks like for the coast we're going to be seeing a low of 48 for Houston for Austin, a low of 44, and of course, it's always a little bit colder out there to the north of us, and the South Plains is going to be experiencing low temperatures in about the 30s. But it should be warming up for Texas, especially if you're going to be driving out there to the east again, where we're going to be seeing cooler temperatures out here to the west, and as you drive east, as things get a little bit warmer and a little bit more humid, that's where you're going to be seeing those good temperatures. So if you have the drive from hell, as my good friends from Houston call it, that 10-hour drive, at least you have that to look forward to on it, that it's going to be getting a lot warmer and a lot sunnier as you drive down. Bringing it back into Lubbock locally, we're going to be seeing a high of 63 for tomorrow, a low of 37, and a southeasterly wind at 10 to 20 miles per hour, very sunny like it is today. For Saturday, it's going to be a little bit gusty, a little bit windy that day, 
with a high of 64, a low of 44. Remember that southerly wind from the coast I was talking about? Here it is again. It's going to be coming from the south at 20 to 30 miles per hour. And again, 40 mile per hour wind gusts are possible for that day. So definitely make sure you don't wear a skirt for that day or you might be Marilyn Monroe outside. For Sunday, we're going to be seeing another chances of rain for that day. It's going to be cloudy for most of the day. And then the rain chances are going to be coming in around the afternoon with a 40% chance of rain for the area. High of 66, low of 51 and a south by southwesterly wind coming at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Now, if you are cutting town early to get your spring break plans, I hope you drive safe and have a good time, and make sure to check the weather before you get on the road. I'm Madison Hart for MCTV Weather. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Madison. The Texas Tech men's basketball team is sitting firmly on the NCAA tournament bubble after another tough loss on the road this week. The Red Raiders headed to Waco on Tuesday to take on the number four ranked Baylor Bears. Texas Tech came in, into Tuesday's contest desperately needing a win after dropping their previous two conference games. Both teams came to, ready to play, but Tech surprised the home crowd by heading into halftime and the end of regulation tied with the Bears. Heading into overtime, the Red Raiders stayed neck and neck with Baylor, with Tech even coming within one point of the Bears with 47 seconds left in the game. Unfortunately, Tech couldn't retain control of the ball and a late foul gave Baylor the chance to extend the lead and capture the win 71-68. Up next, the men return to the United Supermarkets to close out their season against number one ranked Kansas on Saturday. A win against the Jayhawks could all but guarantee Tech's spot in the NCAA tournament, but a loss may force Tech to put on a big show in next week's conference championships. Saturday's tip-off is set for 1 p.m., and if you can't make it, you can watch it on ESPN. The Lady Raider basketball team is also gearing up for their final regular season game after a tough loss at home last night. The West Virginia Mountaineers headed to the USA to set up the senior night matchup against the Lady Raiders. Tech kicked off the game with 21 points in the first quarter, but after that the Mountaineers took over out until halftime, limiting Tech to just six points in the second quarter. After the half, the Lady Raiders found their footing and eventually tied things up with seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. Tech went shot for shot with the Mountaineers until the last three minutes of play when West Virginia went on a four-point run heading into the final minute. The Lady Raiders finally found the basket again with 10 seconds left to play, but the Mountaineers hit two last-second free throws to put the game just out of reach of Tech. The Mountaineers took home the win, 71-69. In spite of the loss, senior Brittany Brewer capped off her senior season with 21 points, 14 rebounds, and six blocks. With their home schedule finished, the Lady Raiders head north to Norman, Oklahoma for their final regular season matchup against the Oklahoma Sooners. Tech hopes to secure one more victory to top off their first winning season in seven years. Tech vs. Oklahoma is set for 1 p.m. on Saturday, and you can catch all the action on Fox Sports Oklahoma. Red Raider baseball is on a roll after finishing out their latest mid-season series with a two-game sweep. Tech took on, the Re took on the UNLV Rebels starting on Tuesday at Dan Law Field at Rip Griffin Park. Raining conditions moved the start time to 3 p.m., but it made no difference as the Red Raiders blew out the Rebels 11-2. Ten different Red Raiders had hits, and eight players made their way across home plate to score. Sophomore pitcher Mason Montgomery had a nice afternoon going five innings and only allowing one run on three hits. Yesterday afternoon, Tech pulled off another big win rooting at UNLV 11-3. Freshman Jace Young hit two home runs and senior Brian Klein recorded a career-high three doubles to lead the Red Raiders to the midweek sweep. Tech continues preseason play as they welcome the Rice Owls to town for a three-game weekend series at Danlaw Field at Rip Griffin Park. The action kicks off tomorrow at 6.30 p.m., followed by a 3 p.m. start on Saturday and an 11.30 a.m. first pitch on Sunday. The first two games will only be available through Texas Tech TV, but you can watch Sunday's matchup on Fox Sports Southwest+. Plus. On the other side of the diamond, the women's softball team is hoping for a change of pace after a rough outing at last week's Judy Garman Classic. The Red Raiders headed to Fullerton, California with hopes of improving their record against ranked competition, but Tech came out of the five-game series with only one win. Tech dropped games against number four ranked LSU on Thursday, followed by a one-run loss to Cal State Fullerton that night. Friday, the team faced BYU, but also came up short. 
On Saturday, Tech faced another ranked opponent, number 11 Michigan, at 7 p.m. Unfortunately, the Wolverines outscored the Red Raiders 8-2. In Tech's last game of the weekend, they finally found the win column as they took down Grand Canyon University with a final score of 6-2. The Red Raiders are hoping to regroup and put on a much better showing this weekend as they host the annual Janine McKinney Memorial Classic at Rocky Johnson Field. Tech welcomes Delaware State to town for their first matchup at 4 p.m. tomorrow, followed by a 6.30 p.m. nightcap against the Fairleigh Dickinson Knights. On Saturday, the Red Raiders take on Marist College at 4 p.m. and another game under the lights against the Knights at 6.30. Tech will finish out the weekend series with Delaware State on Sunday at 11 a.m. All of the games will be available through Texas Tech TV and over the air on KTXT 88.1 FM. Sarah, can you believe spring break is just over a week away? I can't. I don't know where the semester went. Me neither. <laughs> That's all for today's edition of the MCTV week Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you next week.